AMD's flagship GPUs, the 7900 XT and the 7900 XTX, will both be launching on December 13th. The 7900 XTX is the best offering from Team Red we've ever seen, and it was originally aimed as being a direct competitor to the RCX 4090 from Nvidia, but it actually now appears that it's really more of a 4080 competitor. Ultimately though, we wanna compare the best offerings from Team Red and Team Green, so we'll be covering the performance, specs, and power consumption and price for the flagship GPUs of both Nvidia and AMD. So let's get into it. Current reports concerning the specifications of the RX 7900 XTX are extremely promising. The card will feature 12,288 streaming processors, 384 TMUs, 192 ROPs, 96 RT cores, and 96 compute units. It's also going to come with an amazing 24 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory based on a 384-bit bus. On the other hand, the 4090 packs 16 thousand streaming processors, 512 texture mapping units, 176 ROPs, 128 RT cores, and also shares the same 24 gigabytes of memory. However, we do need to note that it is X memory. It's also based on the 384 bit bus. While most reports are still based on these speculations, the specification differences already given, given us an idea of what to expect. When we compare the number of TMUs, ROPs, RT cores, and CUDA cores for both of these flagships, there's no doubt that the 4090 will outshine the 7900 XTX in speed and overall performance. Though slower than the 4090, it's still faster than the 4080, and rightly so because insider information from AMD's chief architect of gaming solutions and marketing, Frank Azor, has clearly stated that the Radeon 7900 XTX was made to compete with the 4080 and not the flagship NVIDIA GPU. Despite not being able to compete with NVIDIA's flagship, the 7900 XTX is still the best performing desktop GPU from AMD yet and is one of the first G GPUs in the world to have a chiplet-based design. The chiplet-based design features a GPU die of dual components, which are the graphics compute die and the memory cache die. The GCD is designed on a new 5 nanometer manufacturing process, while the MCD uses the older 6 nanometer process. AMD was able to achieve up to 15% higher speeds and up to 54% better power efficiency thanks to this strategy. But before we get carried away by the 4090 GPU being the best in the market currently, let's not forget to add that AMD's 7900 XDX still does have some advantages over the 4090. Ultimately, AMD disclosed very little about the performance of their GPUs. Generally speaking, when it comes to raw 4K roster performance, the 7900 XTX is around 1.5 to 1.7 times faster than the previous generation 6950 XT. Going by this convention, it offers almost the same performance as the RTX 4090. Nevertheless, it's still about 10% slower, and when it comes to ray tracing, the XTX is about 68% faster than the 6950 XT. But when compared to NVIDIA's flagship, it's more equal to the 3090 Ti and 20% slower than the 4090. Note, however, that most of these performance claims are theoretical. Also, the 7900 XT has been advertised as being capable of 4K and 8K performance, and we will inevitably have to wait until December for those third-party reviews to come in. However, the RTX 4090 and the 7900 XTX both use AI upscaling technology to achieve the claim frame rates. Team Red has fully committed to FSR3, whereas Team Green favors DLSS3. Add to this, more performance for a higher price is undoubtedly NVIDIA's primary goal in setting its high pricing for the ADA GPU. In the end, the performance is actually rather good and an enormous improvement over Ampere architecture. AMD's RDNA 3 took a different bend, however, while the flagship is still slower than NVIDIA's ADA, you can be assured of better performance for the same price as last generation. The 4090 is obviously for those gamers who don't count the cost when interested in the latest and greatest features along with insanely fast performance. AMD's RDNA 3 on the other hand is a card for those content with a decent performance boost against previous gens without much price difference. For perspective, you forego 20% performance for a 60% price difference.
It's clear from the XTX's main advantages that AMD has the upper hand over Nvidia in this generation. Despite this, there's no mistake that the 7900 XTX is slower than the 4090, making the 4090 the best graphics card to date. On the other hand, the XTX seems unbeaten as the best card for value as it's less expensive and provides a better cost per frame. Also, gamers could perhaps hold off on conclusions till the reviews of the new graphics cards are released, which will be in a few more weeks. Then, and only then, will it be possible for reviewers to reach more accurate conclusions based on the test results they get. Regardless, the XTX is still a very powerful graphics card that is sure to bring high performance and it's expected to outperform the more expensive RTX 3090 Ti in terms of speed. While both GPUs feature memory sizes of 24 gigabytes, the XTX util utilizes GDDR6, whereas the 4090 uses the faster GDDR6X. Although the R6X memory is quicker, it also uses more power. While this is another strike for NVIDIA, it demonstrates the fact that the 4090 outperforms the 7900 XTX in terms of maximum bandwidth, which is measured in terms of possible data transfer per second. This performance matches the rates originally observed with the RTX 3090. Ti in March. The RTX 4090 is the second PCI 5 compliant GPU to break the 1000 gigabytes per second threshold. Nevertheless, the 7900 XTX appears to have a better 8K performance than the 4090 does. When compared to the latter, AMD uses the faster DisplayPort 2.1 interface in its design, while the 4090 still features the first version. The choice of display interface used by AMD is speculated to offer more bandwidth, most especially when the new 8K monitors are announced later this year. Now let's compare the size of these units. For starters, the compact size of AMD's flagship makes it compatible with any case setup when compared to the bulky size of the 4090. The 4090's higher TDP has demanded the use of larger cooling fans. As a result, the top tier ADA graphics card is substantially larger than the RTX 3090 Ti, which was previously the biggest GPU that Nvidia had. The 4090 would require a complete tower PC case or enough room in your chassis to support the cooler's weight and bulk, which is almost twice as thick as the GPU itself. With the 7900 XTX being 71 millimeters shorter and roughly 19% smaller than its competitor, you're not gonna have to worry about fitting it into your PC case. Now let's talk about the power ratings. When it comes to power rating, the 7900 XTX is much more power efficient than the RTX 4090. Rated for 355 watts in contrast to the RTX 4090's 450 watt power rating. The Nvi Nvidia flagship can also draw up to 600 watts when overclocked. That is freaking insane. The huge power draw of the 4090 has been reported to cause significant issues. Reports from users say that the plastic housing of the power connector melts after extended use, causing damage to the connector on their RTX 4090. This melting issue appeared to be caused when there are bends in the cable around the power connector. AMD further claims that the flagship would have more power per watt than its predecessors with increased power efficiency. With the 24 gigabyte GDD R6 memory it features, the XTX looks about ready to beat the 4090 at performance per watt. Pricing. With a MSRP of $1,500, the 4090 is more expensive than the XTX that starts at $999. While final pricing are usually determined by retailers, the MSRP pricing plainly shows that the 4090 costs around 50% more. A factor for this high price of the Nvidia's flagship comes down to its design components. AMD decided to forego the latest TSMC 4N fab process to help cut down costs. This fab process is more expensive than the 5 to 6 nanometer process used by AMD. NVIDIA, on the other hand, chose the latest 4N design that promises an optimized performance and power consumption and an additional reason why this GPU is more expensive. When it comes down to availability, the RTX 4090 is now available for purchase, while the 7900 XTX won't be available until December 13th. At the end of the day, both of these graphics cards are amazing. But really, my question for you guys is, which card are you going to choose? In our opinion, the price to value lies with AMD, and unless you are the most hardcore of enthusiasts, I don't see any real reason to go for the 4090 over the 7900 XTX. With that said, let us know down in the comments if you disagree, and we'll catch you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching.